Welcome to the brand new Draymond Green Show YouTube channel. Hit subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our content. When Don Nelson gets hired, what are your immediate thoughts? Um, Thank God. <laughs> Thank God, yo. What a mercy. You know, I had Mike Montgomery the year before. And, you know, he, he, he coached like, you know, like we stupid. <laughs> what? He, he talked like we stupid. <laughs> he talked to us like we stupid, bro. Like, you know, like, give me an example. Like, he's, like, like, he's basically like, he, you know, a coach like just keeps coaching mm -hmm. and telling you everything to do. And then when you like do something, he's like, no, don't do it. I'm like, whoa, homie. Like, you know, like people who coach every play. Mm hmm. And don't yeah. understand that, <laughs> that dude, this is a performance. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yo, you got to chill, yo. You got to chill. Absolutely. Like, like, it got to a point with Mike Montgomery where we had a team meeting. And, you know, everybody was just not saying nothing. And he was doing all the talking. And he was like, you know, because everybody is saying this about you. And I'm like, man, who? And then we all right here. Who got a problem? Who got a problem? Who got a problem with who? Mm -hmm. Like, on the team. And so I had to address it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I had to get people to start speaking up, saying what they had problems and what they had issues with. And when it came out and dudes were speaking up about their problems and their issues and what they was going to the coach for, it was some petty shit. That's why we suck. And so I had to tell Mike Montgomery, don't talk to me for the rest of the year, bro. <laughs> don't say nothing to me. That coach, you, 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 cool. If you need to translate a message, please send it to them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because the signal is disconnected, bro. I have disconnected this line. There's, you're telling me nothing to help me out here, bro. You ain't telling us nothing to help ourselves out here. You just out here coaching. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm like, you just coaching, bro. You just coaching. Like, every game you come prepared, you ready to coach. You ready to coach more than you care to see us play well. You know? <laughs> it's all about I hate coaches like that. Oh, my God. Because it's all about you. You're going to over-prepare us, yep. which we don't need, like, all of that. And it's ultimately just so you can feel good about yourself. Bro, I don't remember nothing this man has told me. <laughs> That's why I couldn't give you no scenarios. I cut him off, bro. I had to cut him off. When I first got there, when I first got to Golden State, I walked into, you know, you walk into the, uh, you know, dudes on the uh, um, the, the BOSU ball on the mm -hmm. little mat part. And I walked in, it's like, you know, practice like probably like 10, 15, you know. I guess they started practice, they had a little film was going to start. But like nobody was on the court. Dudes was like still in the training room. One dude was lifting, a couple dudes on the court, and I'm talking to Chris Muller. I said, God damn, what's wrong? What's wrong with y'all? It's like a damn funeral. <laughs> like every day you walk in, it was like a funeral. Like, damn, man. Somebody don't want to be here today. <laughs> I was like, yo, we can't keep doing this, dog. I can't keep coming to the gym and it ain't cracking. Mm hmm like, why are we depressed? Like, we who? And it was really because of, like, how we was practicing. You know what I mean? And, like, when I first got traded, I was, like, back-to-back uh, -back player of the week. And that was because I was like, all right, man, look, this is what we going to do. <laughs> we going to run one play. Other than that, we, we hooping. Mm -hmm. Like, man, don't look to the sidelines. Like, we going to get cracking. And I think that kind of, like, started giving us life. We had a great, we finished like nine and two to finish the season, similar okay. to we believe, but we was way out the playoffs. Then the next year, man, we came back, man, and from the first day he started coaching again. And it was like, God damn, dude, we're about to have a whole <laughs> we about to have a whole season of this shit. Like you can't, you can't perform when you just constantly someone's trying to like tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. And like then it's condescending. You know what I mean? Facts. And so I just kind of like wrote Mike Montgomery off and just was like, you know, if I see him today, what's up, coach? Like, but he is not, to me, a basketball mind. Uh. You know what I mean? 
and some people get credit for being highly intelligent in our space. That's you fact. know what I mean? That is a fact. <laughs> Where we have to be of the most intelligence, where our sensors got to be connected. You know what I mean? We got to make the decisions or make a decision to make a decision. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like, you getting credit for this, bro? You better knock it off. Yeah. Get out this, yeah. shut up. <laughs> yeah. Get out the way. So that was kind of like walking into that corpse. And then when Don Nelson came, it was like, oh man, hell yeah. All I can think about was run TMC. Okay, we yeah. out. He called me, he was like, man, get in shape. You know, uh, this gonna be the type of game. I'm gonna use you in the post. How you play below the free throw line, you know, just kind of use you all over the space. And I was like, all right, shit, I'm with that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, shit, I get to I get to fly up and down the court and like and play free, I'm with it. Mm -hmm. And then when uh when the season started, we was we was good, but we wasn't good. You know what I mean? Yeah. We, we just like we couldn't beat no we could we could beat people, we couldn't beat nobody. Mm -hmm. We couldn't put it together. Mm -hmm. And um, we were missing something, and I didn't. You know what I mean? It was like I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't there with what I was in New Orleans. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like I damn near. You know, New Orleans had to train me, and I had to get out of New Orleans because I was too. It was too fun. It was cracking. It was culture. But I was just there to play basketball. So the culture part was like, that's what was missing. So when they make the trade with Stack mm -hmm. and, and Al, Al, they bought, they they kind of like woke everybody up. Like, nah, it's it's cracking. Like, we gonna have parties, we going out, we gonna hang out, we gonna go to the mall, we gonna go eat, we gonna have fun. Because before that, nobody on the team fuck with each other. And so that just kind of changed the dynamic to where we was like, all right, man, we like a new, we like the new rap group. Yeah. And we just took on that persona everywhere, we, every city we went to. And it was like, we gonna, we gonna party on, the court is our club. If we win, we going out. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and it's up, and it's up, and, and what I, you know, it's up. And so that's, that's kind of like how that energy started. Cause we was like, uh, nah, we was winning going on the We Believe run, but them fools go out all the time. But once we start winning, like, all this is way before the playoffs. We had one, like, you know, you win. Well, you don't know that because you only, <laughs> <laughs> you've only won championships but before. Like, you win three or four games in a row as the Warriors. Oh, it's sold out in Oracle. It's cracking. Yeah. Dog, we was winning, like, three in a row. Go out to the club. It's cracking. Oh, we won six out of eight. Go to the club. It's cracking. The whole We Believe run, we was just out. Yeah. And so, like, the fans was like, damn, like, these motherfuckers real. You know what I mean? Like, they partying with us. Like, we don't know if this shit is going to last. <laughs> so everybody was getting it so in. So you embrace it. <laughs> yeah, everybody. It was a big party. It was like a big party, dude. I heard a story about y'all partying before. I don't know if it's true or not, but I heard the story. Um, one night with Snoop. Yeah. That, that was that uh, night nice, real. <laughs> <laughs> that that was uh, I think that was the night we beat Dallas. Yes. Yeah, that was the okay. night we beat Dallas, and uh, Snoop, we went to go fuck with Snoop. You know, Snoop was uh at the Ritz or whatnot, and then we was all fucking with Snoop. Of course, you know, Snoop, we smoking, so we smoking, and Snoop like, hey, cuz. Like, you know, let me show you one of these cartoons, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> did they tell you this? No, I ain't hear this. Hey, one. Snoop Dogg had a cartoon, like music videos, right? And I think it was to his, <laughs> to his whole album. <laughs> yeah. Hey, bro. <laughs> hey, bro, we was sitting there. No bullshit, watching the cartoon. Dog, for like 45 minutes, I was like, hey, bro, I got to go. <laughs> hey, it was nothing but music videos. And it was Snoop. It was like a Snoop Dogg. Video album of cartoons, bro. We was sitting there talking, who baked, and all that was playing was the, was the cartoon. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, damn, is this shit on a loop, bro? Is this the same song, wait, or is these the same three songs? And I'm, I, I was over there, fucked. I was like, yo, I gotta go, yo. I'm done. I can't do this. <laughs> you got me, Snoop. He Mom. smoked y'all out, man, big time. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's Snoop. <laughs> Good that's times, Snoop. It man. was cracking. 
What what was it like? <clears throat> um, y'all beat Dallas, mm-hmm. and then going into that next round, was it like, man, we done? Like, or or no? Nah, did y'all ready. start to really believe? Like, no, nah, we can keep. We be- we we believe we could beat Utah. Mm-hmm. It was all predicated on like. It was almost like we, um, before the series, we start tripping with each other. But not so much like the team. It was just like when we started talking, dudes was like, all right, how much you got left, bro? It was like, man, I, like, bro, honestly, I ain't got much left. But, you know, like we had, we was just like pretty much depleted. And so, you know, like in that next round, it's just like, Four good minutes of mental focus and plays that can turn the series, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. And I think, you know, at the time, like, we didn't get game one. I missed some free throws. Mike Mikhail Petras missed some free throws. And then we wound up going to overtime. So we we had game one. We didn't get it. Game two, we thought we had. We didn't get it. Game three, we blew them out, dunk on them. It was like, all right, we, we finally over the hump. We back. And then game four, they get they 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 snatch it from us. It was like, God damn, three one going back to Utah. Niggas was like, man, you know, Monte wasn't playing in this series. Stack was guarding Memento Core. Al wasn't matched up with Boozer. It was just like all our matchups was right for Dallas. All our matchups for Utah was all the way off, bro. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And dudes was like. You know, if you ain't got that matchup you want, it's hard to like it's matchups hard to be are, effective. People don't understand matchups in the playoffs are everything. everything. You get the wrong matchup, you fuck. St- Steven Stagjack was like, yo, bro, I'm I want he wanted to guard Karolinko. Mm-hmm. So he coming off, you know, guarding Dirk, you know, Karolinko, big time defensive player. Stack like, man, put me on Karolinko. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Cause Karolinko gonna guard Stack. And then Al and Bulls, like they had a little battle thing, but Coach didn't, like we didn't, we didn't use it. We didn't play our talent to our advantage yeah. in that series. You know yeah, what I mean? Absolutely. We were trying to like figure it out when guys were convicted. You know what I mean? I'm like, man, I know how to, you know, I, I need this matchup. You know Facts. what I'm saying? And it was just like, man, we was just arguing every game about the matchups or what, you know, and it was just, it wasn't that same, oh, we're going to beat these fools. Mm-hmm. You know the beautiful thing about being a sports fan? There's only like two days the whole year without a game. Two. With so much happening and so much action, that makes just about every day game day at DraftKings Sportsbook. It's super easy for first-timers to get started. Try betting on something simple like picking a team to win. Go to the DraftKings Sportsbook app, select your team, and place your first bet. It really couldn't be any easier or any simpler. Baseball, golf, UFC, there's something for every fan of every sport to bet on DraftKings. And I know it's early, but football season will be here before you know it. And the Kansas City Chiefs are currently the favorite to win the Super Bowl on DraftKings at plus 550. And if you're new to DraftKings, you got to check this out. New customers bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets instantly. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code HOOPS. That's H-O-O-P-S. That's code HOOPS for new customers to get 150 in bonus bets instantly when you bet just $5. Only on DraftKings, the crown is yours. 